Well, good afternoon, Slay family. It is a pleasure to be back here with you today. And today is part two of our alternative medicine type series, I will say. We have a very special guest today, and I'm thrilled to have her here. Uh, last week, we were able to hear from someone who went through an alternative type of treatment. And this week, we are going to talk to a doctor who gives alternative treatment of a different type as well. So joining us today is our very special guest, Dr. Kimberly Williams-Park. And thank you so much for being here, Kim. Really appreciate your time. Thank you for inviting me. Appreciate being here. My pleasure. And uh, first, we're going to dive in and we're going to tell you a little bit her, about her background and then what she does to help people, which I think will be very exciting and educational for all of us today. So um, your background is in family medicine, mm -hmm. and I believe you practiced for about 17 years before you started transitioning. Is that correct? That's correct. And you're located? In uh, Delaware County, Pennsylvania, in media. is That's the main office. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then you made a shift. Can you tell everybody about your first shift when you started moving away from that traditional practice? So I left primary care and became a house call physician. I worked as an independent contractor for a house call group and did that for a number of years, about three or four years. And then I joined after that a, um, a startup for um, a house call practice and uh, was very integral in hiring people and getting it all set up. And uh, so I did that for a number of years. And then once that was in place, uh, they took, there were about four of us physicians and they laid us off, but that was okay. They let us off and uh, gave me an opportunity to figure out what the next step was. And so I chose medical marijuana because, uh, it, uh, because I believe in it. And I thought there needed to be more physician representation than there is. So. so there's about 10 lessons you just threw in there. Okay. So one is, you know, the transition, you sounds like you became more and more personal. You start off in family practice and then you move to house calls and then you moved along this way where you're really getting more and more individually catering towards right. the actual patient. Yes. Yep. And that is something that's so missing in modern medicine. So thank you, first of all, for taking that kind of stand for people. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And the second thing that I love for anybody who's listening, whether you are a, a physician or a patient or none of the above, is that you very quickly blew past something that you did, which is that you faced an obstacle in life and turned it into an opportunity. Many people struggled with being laid off and different kinds of problems and the pandemic and you created something out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was risky in a sense, you know, back then, because I, at the time, I didn't know a lot about medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. I did know that I had a qualifying condition. So I had the opportunity to learn about it firsthand. And um, in so doing that, you know, it just became something that I became passionate about, you know, because I, I really do see after prescribing lots of pharmaceutical medications, I found this alternative to be much safer and healthier, you know. So. Excellent. Mm -hmm. It is interesting because nowadays there are so many pharmaceutical ads, if you ever watch television at all. And I think the laundry list of side effects that they rattle off are more dangerous and terrifying than whatever it's supposed to treat in a lot of cases. But a lot of people just accept them, you know, which I don't understand, but they do, you know, they just say, oh, well, that's possible, you know, but, but because their doctor prescribes it, they take it. And oftentimes it is the right thing to do, you know, and I'm, I'm very much for uh, conservative medicine, you know, in combination with alternative medicine. I am. Yes. But I, do, I do see where cannabis can really play a role in um, making you less, um, rely less dependent on pharmaceutical medication for sure you know mm -hmm. sure and you really um you break the image and boundaries of what's possible with all of this because you know a lot of times people think of medical marijuana and they don't see a very established experienced physician like you discussing it i second of all you know to break the old um image of what all that looks like. I'm going to throw in a little fun fact here. Among the many things you do, back in 2019, you started working with uh, over 100 nuns, among many things that you do. Yeah. Can you take a second and share 
what you've done and what that relationship has been and what that's meant for you. So I work part time for um, a, a pretty large, um, uh, I can't think the name of it, health system. Yeah, health system. And they needed a physician to work with two different populations and uh, only a part time physician, which is that was all I needed to do at the time. So one was going to be at a facility for retiring nuns, mm -hmm. and the other one was going to be at a deaf aged community. So um, they were actually very um, uh, happy with the fact that I was, you know, in cannabis medicine and doing that because they felt that that showed that I had a lot, a lot of compassion. So they invited me to join their team. And so I do that part time and uh, it's very rewarding. And the nuns are very accepting of cannabis, of, of medical marijuana. They feel that, you know, it's great that I know about it and they're very curious about it. So it's good. Very open minded. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting because, you know, sometimes people think of it and, you know, in the past, marijuana has had such an association with a certain character. You wouldn't think that a nun would be OK with that. You know. <laughs> so let's talk about it. Um, you know, what are the common needs or uses or relief that it provides for patients? When do you typically I know everybody's different. That's part of your whole practice. Right. But what is it? What is, are some of the more common mainstream needs you see for it? And how does it help the patient? Well, you know, it helps with their anxiety, it helps with their pain, and that usually is across the board in all these disease states, you know. Um, so the mo most common ones that we see are chronic pain, anxiety, PTSD, those are probably the most common. Um, I see a lot of inflammatory bowel disease, uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, stroke patients, mm. even uh, patients with dementia, and with autism, it goes on and on. But you know, the, by far, anxiety, PTSD, chronic pain are, are you know the top three. I would say, so it helps them in each of those conditions. It, it number one, it's going to help them have restorative sleep. You know, and that is so important because you know if you're in chronic pain, you don't usually sleep very well. If you're anxious, you know you're having racing thoughts generally. If you have PTSD, you know you're. Um, you know, at risk for nightmares and things like that. So number one, you know, to provide re restorative sleep. I think that's, that's you know, um, the big thing in all across the board, I would say. And then, you know, depending on whatever the condition is, you know, then um, you give intermittent relief throughout the day as well. And depending on, you know, what you choose, a lot of people I've found that, you know, get their medical marijuana card and, and they go through like a, um, a certification um, business kind of practice tend to just vaporize, you know, and they don't really take part in all the other products that they have, you know, the topicals, the, um, the tinctures, the capsules, all those things uh, can be so uh, helpful in controlling your pain. So, you know, when I, myself, when I got certified, I went through a process where there was no education. And um, I really had, fortunately, you know, I had an interest in it, you know, and I thought about doing this. So I learned about it. But that's mostly the case with people who get certified. They really um, are clueless, you know, and, until they walk into the dispensary. And at that point, you know, um, hopefully they'll get to talk to a pharmacist, but that's not always the case. Sure. Um, but um, so, yeah, it's just basically controlling whatever condition they have that's bothersome to them. Yeah. So I, I understand how it works with pain and with sleep. How, I'm just curious if you don't mind me asking, though, how does it work with autism? You mentioned that and we've had the Autism Society yeah. as a guest of Slay. So I was kind of intrigued by that piece of it. Well, they've done some studies recently and they've found that, um, you know, you're, you have an endocannabinoid system mm -hmm. and that's where the phytocannabinoids come in. You know, they create homeostasis. And as it turns out that uh, one of the endocannabinoids called anandamide is generally uh, either faulty or in low amounts in kids with autism it's, it's or humans with autism. You know, it's thought that... Um, that that is uh, something that they don't have enough of. So THC is very much similar to anandamide, you know, so okay. that that's one of the ways that it can help. But CBD is also a big 
you know, part two that can um, help with um, raising serotonin levels, all kinds of things, you know, it can do to help with, um, with behaviors and with autism. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. So now you are the founder and owner of Medicom. So can you explain to people a little bit about the services? And also, I believe you have links where people can purchase things. Maybe you could share with everyone about your business and your website, please. Right. So uh, when I started, I had to pick an, uh, um, uh, an electronic medical record and I had to, you know, obviously figure out how to do everything. I ended up hiring a, um, a wonderful uh, office manager who I think is watching today, uh, Rhonda. And um, we together work as a team. You know, it's been, uh, I think, th almost three years for her. She joined me in August of 2019. So we have, um, it's just two of us. We have a website where you can go on and you can book a telephone appointment mm -hmm. back during the, you know, I think it was 2020 when they shut down everything, they allowed us to go with uh, telemedicine. So that's what we've been doing. So you can book a, tele, uh, a telemedicine appointment. Uh, once you do that, uh, Rhonda sends you all the information you need to uh, confirm the appointment, you know, and she will help out with getting people registered because everybody needs to get registered with the state. I just practice in Pennsylvania for this. So people register with the state and then they have to uh, send us some medical records, you know, just, um, uh, you know, confirming their, um, their diagnosis that they have one of the 23 qual qualifying conditions. And then uh, once that happens, uh, they're on my schedule. So I call them at that time and uh, we go through a whole process. I kind of, you know, take their history and everything. And then uh, I try to tease from them, um, you know, what they know about medical marijuana. And if it's nothing, then I go through a whole um, series of just a summary of what's in it, what's at the dispensary, what might help for them. Um, so and it's, it's very individualized depending on their condition, you know, and what else, what medicines they're on, because oftentimes I'm checking while I'm doing the certification uh, for drug to drug interactions and things like that, just so sure. that I can give them, you know, the proper, um, uh, you know, advice regarding that. And then um, with every certification that we do, uh, they are um, welcome to contact us all throughout the year, you know, if they get stuck, if they have any questions. The other thing that we do is uh, with each certification, we send them an email that has like recommended links, you know, as far as education goes, and just some advice as far as getting started, you know, uh, mm -hmm. with medical marijuana. Um, the other thing that happened about a year into um, my practice was I started getting um, emails from people who owned hemp farms and things like that in the local area, or they had CBD companies asking me if I wanted to try their stuff. And I, you know, I thought, sure, I'll try it. So they sent it to me and I would try it. it would be a topical or something. And I said, yeah, it's very nice. You know, I think it works well, very nice. Then they asked me, you know, this one in particular, if I wanted to um, buy the product wholesale and sell it. So I thought about that for a long time, you know, figured out, you know, how to do it. And then I went ahead and decided that I would be a curator. You know, I would pick uh, some of them are local. Some of the uh, CBD companies are local. Some of them are nationwide, but they're all um, good quality. They all have what's called a certificate of analysis showing that um, they are um, good quality. You know, they are uh, tested by an independent lab. They don't have molds. They don't have pesticides, things like that. And um, I provide that for patients. Not everybody is a candidate for that, you know, depending on what other meds they're on and everything. But sure. if they are, then I will suggest that. And then we always offer a discount, you know, and then my daughter who um, is very much interested in cannabis, you know, from a medicinal um, end of it, she actually is the person who mails everything out. So it's free shipping, you know, she sends it to you and everything. So we provide that too. That's just as an aside, you know, it's not something that I push, um, you know, it's there if anybody wants it, you know, just to make it easier for them to, to find quality products. 
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And do you consult or provide any services for people outside of Pennsylvania? Um, I would. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I can't certify them, but if they are a uh, medical marijuana patient and they want, um, you know, some advice as far as what they could try, you know, to maybe help with their condition, I'd be happy to do that. We do provide like 20 minute uh, sessions. I'm actually in the process of changing my website to non-certification visits versus mm. certification visits. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. So you are now, um, you have your website, we'll post that as well. And mm -hmm. if people have questions or comments and they're watching this, there's two ways they can watch it live on Facebook or on the YouTube uh, channel, then they can go ahead and post some questions and you'd be happy to comment, I assume, and help them out. Absolutely. Yeah, great. Well, it's really interesting, you know, from uh, last week, we had someone, I, I know you had seen her speak, mm -hmm. who survived stage four cancer with mistletoe treatment. It was the wildest thing ever. So we went from mistletoe to marijuana. So it's all kind of good here. <laughs> but I think it's so important to have someone like yourself who has that credibility and has that experience to just let people know that there are alternatives out there. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I, and I, I, tried it firsthand, you know, and I can attest to it, you know, that it works pretty well. And it is pretty amazing. Um, and I, when I read textbooks from other physicians who, you know, do what I do, you know, they all say the same thing that uh, it's amazing how many people, uh, when you talk to them after they've been on it for a year or two, they will tell you that it's been life changing, you know, mm -hmm. you hear that over and over again. And, you know, after a while you start to believe it, you know, <laughs> you can see that it's true. So it's very good. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Kim, for being here and educating everyone today. Mm -hmm. uh, we celebrate not only your information and everything you're doing, but also I love to hear a woman who's out there doing something, breaking a barrier. And, you know, mm -hmm. you turned a bad situation into an incredible way to help people. So really want to acknowledge and thank you for doing that. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me on here. It's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. So we will be uh, back again next Tuesday, switching gears to a new topic. I'm sure if you have heard anything in the news, you've heard the interest rates just went skyrocketing. Uh, we had the largest rate increase in 28 years in this country. So next week, we will be featuring a guest who's one of the top loan originators in the mortgage industry in the United States. And she will come on and share her perspective on what you need to know and how to handle all the changes in the market. So thank you again, Kim, for being here. And we yeah. will see you all live next Tuesday. All right. Take care, everyone. Take care.